Hey guys, in this video, we are going to do some time series classification using PyTorch Lightning, PyTorch and Python, of course. I'm going to show you how you can convert some CSV files into sequences, wrap everything into PyTorch datasets and data loaders, create the necessary PyTorch Lightning code that you need to do to run a whole model and train an LSTM based neural net. At the end, we're going to do some evaluations and going to have a look at how well the model does. Let's get started. The data that we are going to have a look at is uh, this CareerCon 2019 Health Navigate Robots competition that is uh, probably very much over. Yeah, it is. And uh, for this competition, they had to basically create some robot or collect some robot tensor data. And from that data, uh, that data, they want to classify the type of floor that the robot is on. And they have nine floor types. So the kind of data that uh, they have been collecting is something from acceleration and velocity using various sensors. And to look at the data itself, uh, it basically contains the orientation of the robot angular velocity uh, over the three axes, then the acceleration. And for another CSV file right here, we have series ID, which we are going to uh, use to merge or join with the train data. And then we have the surface, which is the target or the target variable that we want to predict. And here we have some examples of the data. And then here is the example of the Y train data. Here you can see that we have basically strings for the surfaces. And to better understand what the, the data is, we are going to start with the notebook. Okay, so let's open up a brand new notebook on Google Coop. And here I want to change the runtime type to a GPU because yes, we are going to use a GPU from the start. And the first thing that I want to do is uh, check the GPU that we have. And we have a T4, which is going to be just perfect for us. Uh, next, I want to make sure that we have the correct version of Torch, and I'm going to use 181. Uh, this should be the current version of uh, PyTorch at the time of this tutorial. And then I want to install PyTorch Lightning at this uh, version, which is again the current version of PyTorch Lightning, and this should take some time. Next, I want to uh, download the zip from the Kegel uh, competition for the robot uh, sensor data. And I have this on my personal Google Drive and I'm going to download this. This is exactly the zip file that you can download from the Kegel competition by pressing uh, download all right here from the Kegel website. And this gives us a uh, this gives us this zip file, which is around 35 megabyte, uh, mega, megabytes. And to unzip this, I'm going to use the unzip command. Yeah, so now we should have the xtest, xtrain and ytrain files. We are not really going to use the xtest because we are not going to submit uh, for the competition, uh, some of the results that we have, but we are going to read the files for the training data. And next, I want to basically do a bulk import of many stuff that we are going to use. And this will be pretty ugly, but we will need most of those. So these are the huge number of imports. Next, I want to set up Matplotlib. Yep, this should work. And finally, I want to seed everything using PyTorch Lightning. 
So this should hopefully make all of this reproducible. All right, so we have the basic setup of our notebook. And then I want to load the training data. And the, these, these are the features and I want to download or load the labels. So this should do the trick. And if we look at the head of the training data, we have this series ID, measurement number, which basically we are not really interested in both of those columns, but we are going to need the series ID. And then we have the measurements from the various sensors as described into the data, uh, explanations on Kaggle. Next, I'm going to look at the Y train data frame. And here again, you can see the series ID, then this group ID, which we are not going to use, and the surface itself, which is the variable that we are interested in predicting or classifying in all of those series. So uh, next, I want to have a look at the distribution of the different surfaces that we have. And to do that, I'm going to use the value counts from pandas and basically plot a bar chart from that. I want to rotate the ticks uh, because, of course, this should be uh, some of the four types or surfaces have a large number of characters. And you'll see what I mean in a second. And if we run this, uh, you can see that the concrete and soft PVC, the wood, etc., are like the majority of the surfaces that we have. And the, actually, the distribution is not in any way perfect. So what you might want to do is use some sort of uh, resampling or some other technique for balancing this data set. But we are just going to continue around from here. All right, so what we need to do next is do some pre-processing. And the first thing that we need to do is to convert all of those strings into integers because we are required to do classification. And of course, neural nets doesn't work. Uh, neural nets don't work really with anything else than numbers. So for the purposes of converting all of those strings or labels into integers, we are going to use the label encoder from skwarn. And we are going to encode the labels. From the surfaces. And what we have here. are the representations of the labels as integers and the actual names of the labels are stored into the classes property, classes underscore property in the label encoder. So we can basically reverse the transformation if and when we need this. And next, I'm going to store the labels into the white data frame. And then have a look at it. And you can see that we have the, uh, the surface name and then the label representation of the surface as an integer right here. So uh, next, we are going to have a look at the X-train again. And uh, recall that we are going to basically skip all of those columns and then take everything else. So I want to create feature columns, which is going to be the columns. And this should return all of the columns that we are interested in when building the sequences themselves. All right, so 
Next, we need to convert those data, this data frame and the uh, labels themselves into sequences that we are going to use for our data sets. And to do that, I want to basically check one thing. Uh, so to show you what the contest creators did is that basically they added this series ID, which has done the segmentation of the sequences for you already. So if we do the series ID and check the value counts really quickly, you'll see that the examples are kind of maybe all of those are stored into 128. So to check my hypothesis, I did basically this. I took the series IDs, I calculated the value counts, check all of those that are 128 and created, get, got the sum from this one. And this matches this. So this is a pretty strong um, indicator that we are on the right track here. So all of the series or sequences are basically split into 128. And just to check, I want to make sure that we have a label for each of those series. And it appears that uh, this is the case. So I'm pretty certain that uh, all of the sequences have been previously split for us. And using this knowledge, I want to create the sequences themselves. I want to group the series by series ID. I want to take the sequence features from here. And I want to take the label, which is going to be from the, uh, which we're going to take from the white train. And I want to make sure that the series ID is the same as the series ID from the current group. And I'm going to just take the label, which is the integer representation of the surface that we've already encoded. And then I want to append the result to the sequences. And the label, of course. So what we have here at the end, I'm going to show you what a single sequence, is con uh, sing single sequence contains. So it should be this data frame with 128 rows and 10 columns. And then this is the label itself. All right, so this is pretty much the structure of the sequences that we have. Next, I want to split the sequences into training and test sequences. And I want to have a test size of 20%. I want to check the number of training sequences and the number of test sequences. And here we have around 3K examples for the training sequences and about 70, uh, 762 for test. So we are going to now create the date sets for those. And to do the, to basically create the date set, I am going to extend the date set from PyTorch. So let me just mark this. And the data set requires two methods, the land method and the get item method. But first I want this to take the sequences for the date set. And the len for this date set is going to be the length of the sequences. And uh, get item. In here, we're going to take the sequence and the label. Recall that this is actually a tuple. 
and I'm going to return a dictionary from two tensors. The first is going to be the sequence itself. And the sequence currently contains a pandas data frame, and I want to convert this to NumPy and wrap it into a PyTorch tensor. Next, I want to create the label using, again, another tensor, and I want to convert this into a long tensor because, yeah, we are going to do classification. All right, so now that we have this, uh, we are going to create the data module that is required for PyTorch Lightning. And this is going to extend from PyTorch Lightning, Lightning data module. So here I'm going to pass a lot of, uh, I'm going to pass uh, a couple of parameters. But first we need to start with the constructor. And this should take the training sequences, the test sequences, and a patch size. The first thing that we need to do is call the parent constructor. And then I'm going to assign fields for the sequences themselves and for the batch size we want to store those next i'm going to overwrite the setup method and this takes as a parameter the current stage that we're in and pytorch lightning actually thanks to a subscriber or a comment a comment from a user that is or from somebody who is watching the videos he said that i don't need to call the data module setup method on my own and PyTorch Lightning will actually call the setup method for me so thank you for that and we are just going to create the date sets here using the train sequences and uh, test sequences for the test date set Next, we need to create the three data waters for training, validation, and testing. And this will return the data water from PyTorch. Pretty standard stuff. I want this to have a batch size equal to the batch size that we've passed in. I want this to be shuffled just in case and i want the number of workers to be equal to the cpu count that we have on the current machine uh, all right so the saving is complete next i want to do basically the same thing for the validation data water and yeah let's just return this create the test data set and I don't want to shuffle this because uh, we are validating or testing. But I'm going to use the same batch size because this will speed up the process significantly. All right, so this will basically complete the whole data module stuff. We are basically creating those three data waters based on the date set that we've already created. Uh, next, I want to initiate in, initialize the data module, but first I'm going to create the number of epochs which, for which we are going to train and the batch size. Yeah, and we are going to train for a lot of epochs. I'm going to show you the training works from the model that we are going to build. Uh, you might have other options to do it, but at least I uh, had to do a lot of training to get to the results that we are going to see. And the uh, data module here is going to be initialized with the training sequences, test sequences, and the bot size. All right. All right. So let's build the model. And if you've watched the previous video uh, from the time series forecasting that we did, 
uh, in the, the model itself is pretty much the same thing, except that we are going to do classification instead of uh, regression, basically. So let's create the model. And it will extend from NN module from PyTorch. And this should take the number of features that we have, then the number of classes, because we're doing the classification, the number of hidden units, which is going to be 2.256, uh, and the number of layers for the LSTM. I'm going to call the super constructor on this. And then I'm going to store the number of hidden units. Next, I'm going to initialize the LSTM net or layers that we are going to get. And here I want to specify the input size, which is going to be the number of features. Then the hidden size, which is going to be the number of neurons per each layer. I want to have a batch first equal to true because this will be basically the format that we are going to take. And then I want to specify the number of layers. And finally, I want to specify a dropout of 0 0.75. Uh, yeah, how did I end up with this? Um, essentially, I did retrain this thing for like maybe six or seven hours with a lot of hidden uh, with a lot of hyperparameters, and it looks like it benefits a lot from heavy regularization. And of course, you might find that other parameters are better, but this worked kind of alright for me. And finally, we are going to create this classifier layer, and this will be just a linear layer that is taking the output of the last hidden layer from the LSTM and converting this into a classification based on the number of classes that we have. Next, I'm going to override the forward method. And here, just for multi-GPU purposes, I'm going to flatten the parameters. Next, I'm going to pass the hidden units or the output of the hidden layers from the LSTM of the last layer, of course. And since this is multi-layer net, probably, I'm going to take the last, the output of the last state of the last layer, if that makes any sense. And I'm going to convert this. I'm going to pass the result basically through our classifier. So we are going to get uh, this right here. Uh, I can see that I'm not actually going to need this. So I'm going to remove it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to need it. All right, so this is basically the model that we have. And I miss a comma right here. All right, so next we are going to create a PL whitening module, which is going to wrap our model right here. And here again, we need a constructor. We're going to take number of features, which is going to be an integer and the number of classes, which again is going to be an integer. I'm going to call again the super constructor and I'm going to initialize the model. We're going to take the number of features and the number of classes. And I want to specify the was function or the crit criteria for the optimization. And again, uh, of course, we are going to use cross entropy was. All right, so we need to define a forward method here. And I'm going to take optional labels. I'm going to pass the input through our model. 
and initialize the loss to zero. And if we have labels, I want to calculate the loss. And then I want to return the loss and the output right here. All right, next we need to define a couple of more methods. Uh, and I'm going to start with the training step. This is going to be called every time a training step has been, has, it needs to be done. And this will pass a batch of sequences and labels and the ID of the batch, which we are not going to use. I'm going to take the sequences from the batch. And this sequence is based on the sequence that we did here into this dictionary. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for the labels. I'm going to create to pass this batch data through this forward method. And now that we have the outputs, uh, recall that we have kind of, uh, it's not really, like really probability distribution, but some form of distribution for each class based on the cross entropy loss. And just to take the predictions from here, I'm going to use to get the maximum value from those outputs. And this will essentially be the, the, the class that has the most probability based on the uh, R model beliefs. And I want to do this along the first dimension. Then I'm going to calculate the accuracy using the accuracy that is provided from PyTorch Lightning. And I'm going to pass in the predictions and the labels. And let me just show you. This is the, the accuracy measure. And we have a functional accuracy right here. And uh, in PyTorch Lightning, maybe this is not a good example, we are, but it takes basically two tensors. And based on the input of this, it calculates the accuracy. You need to pass in first the predictions and then the actual values. Uh, again, you can calculate top K accuracy if you are interested in this. Uh, so for example, in our case, we might want to Let's say that you want to be either the first or the second surface type is going to be all right for you. So then you can calculate top two accuracy or something like that. But in our case, we are interested in top one accuracy. So we're going to calculate this. And next, since we have the accuracy now, I'm going to walk in the training course, which is return from the forward method. And I want to save this to the progress bar and the logger. I'm going to do the pretty much the same thing for the accuracy. And I want to return a dictionary with the loss and the accuracy. So we are going to walk all of this into a tensor board. So this is pretty much the training step. I'm going to essentially do the same thing for the validation step. But instead of this, I'm going to write validation right here. Uh, yep. And then essentially the same thing for the testing, which we are not really doing because we are not uh, preserving any data in particular for testing. But yeah, you might want to skip all of this. And the final method that we need to overwrite 
is the configure optimizers where you can specify the optimizer and the warning rate schedulers and again i'm probably going to make a deep dive video on pytorch lightning some of the stuff right here are pretty tricky to implement when you have like a more complex warning rate scheduler but in our case i'm not going to use any uh warning rate scheduler which might be of benefit it might be a benefit if you do use some warning rate scheduler for this problem in particular but you have to be to try it on your own or go through the pytorch writing documentation and here i'm going to use just adam and a warning rate of this very small number all right so this should pretty much be everything that we need I'm going to initialize the surface predictor with the number of features and this will be the length of the feature columns and the number of classes we're going to take from the label encoder classes let me just make this a bit prettier okay so this is the model next i'm going to initialize tensor board And this should start the tensor board window or embedding right here. And while this is starting, I want to create a checkpoint callback, which is going to be the model checkpoint that is provided by PyTorch Lightning. And this one pretty much says that there are there is no data which is of course correct because we haven't started the experiment and i'm going to save the checkpoints into checkpoints the file name is going to be best checkpoint i want to save the top one so only the best model i want this to be verbose i want to monitor the validation loss because we are interested in that and we want to minimize it then i'm going to initialize the tensor board logger which is going to look at whitening walks folder and the name of the experiment is going to be surface i'm going to create a trainer which i'm going to pass the logger the checkpoint callback here I want to specify the number of epochs the number of GPUs and the progress bar refresh rate just because we are using this Google Co-op notebook and this should tell you that there is a GPU available and that we are going to use it then I am going to call just trainer fit pass in the method, uh, the model, and the data module, and run this, and hopefully it should start training. Let's wait and see how it goes. All right, it's telling us that we have 1.3 million parameters, and the uh, validation was, is, decreasing at least at the start of this training and I recall that we are training for 250 epochs so I'm going to let the training complete and we're going to have to go back to this at the end of the training so the training has complete and as you can see at least the last of the epochs there wasn't any improvement but I've just let it train and yeah let me just show you what is the final result for this run the test on it and go through the examples and we have uh 78 accuracy actually on the model that i've trained with pretty much exactly the same parameters i got around 
the same thing, 80% and couple points. And if we refresh this, you can see that the training accuracy has been steadily increasing, but it kind of plateaued it right here. And pretty much the same thing for the validation accuracy. So maybe if we had more data here, or maybe you can try other parameters or other models, but I believe that another maybe 10x in the data would improve the quality of the uh, the performance of the model or the predictions much better than anything else. But yeah, we are stuck with this. We don't have any more data. And I want to basically next look through the predictions a bit more and evaluate the results. And to do that, I'm going to train uh, to load the trained model and load it from the checkpoint from the trainer, which is the checkpoint callback, and then the best model path. I want to specify the number of features, which are going to be the number of feature columns. And then I want to specify the classes, the number of classes that we have, which is nine. And then I want to create, uh, sorry, after loading the model, I want to freeze it because, yeah, we need this model to be running just for inference, disable dropout and, st and the gradient calculations. I'm going to create a date set from the test sequences and I'm going to get the predictions and the labels right here and iterate over it, get the sequence, get the label. And I want to take the predictions from this, from our train model, but I need to basically add a dimension here because the model is working with batches and I'm just passing in a single sequence. This unsqueeze will convert it into a batch of one element. And I want to take the output. The prediction is going to be again, the arcmax value from here. And I'm going to append the prediction, just the number from here. And I'm going to append the label, just the number again from here. So this will take about 20 or 30 seconds. And when I have the data for this, I want to basically print out a classification report that is given from SK Warren. I want to pass in the labels, the predictions, and the target names, which are going to be the class names for the label encoder. And if I print this, uh, you see that we have different precision and recall values for the different classes that we have. And recall that we have nine classes right here. You can see that we have very good precision, but low recall for the hard tiles, for example. And uh, if you recall that the data set is quite heavily unbalanced, really. So we have uh, not much examples in the hard tiles. And uh, honestly, this didn't give me a good understanding of where the model is screwing up. But another thing that uh, is really helpful in those kind of kinds of situations is to just plot a confusion matrix. And I'm going to just paste a function that I've already shown in previous videos. This will basically take the conf a confusion matrix and uh, create some uh, ticks and then plot the labels right here and just plot the the Seaborn heat map. So to get a confusion matrix, I'm going to call the confusion matrix function from SK1. I'm going to pass in the labels and the predictions. 
then I'm going to convert this into a data frame, which is going to take the confusion matrix. It's going to have an index with the class names and columns with the class names. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. So this is pretty much the data frame that we're going to pass in to our show confusion matrix function. And this will just make it a bit better to look at. And here is the confusion matrix. So let me just unzoom this. Probably rerun it. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, the model is doing quite all right, I believe. Uh, in one of the cases, it's messing up tiled surface with concrete, which is kind of to be expected. Uh, other errors is making uh, soft PVC or mistaking soft PVC with wood. And another is probably, yeah, we have the hard tiles right here. And let's see the soft tiles with soft PVC again. But yeah, again, the model is doing a quite of all right. I think that if you train it for a bit longer or with other parameters, you might get even better results. But this is a very simple way to evaluate what is happening. Uh, in this case, I would probably go ahead and just, uh, if possible, of course, collect more and more data for the for the minority classes, the classes that hasn't been very well represented here. There you have it. This was an example of how you can take some time series data and convert it into sequences use PyTorch and PyTorch Whitening, create an LSTM-based neural net, use the datasets from PyTorch, get everything together, train it, and evaluate the quality of the classifications. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also comment down below what uh, you might want to see next, or probably if you have any questions on this. I'm going to uh, write out a full text tutorial based on the example that you've seen in this video and I'm going to pin it down in a comment. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.